Y'all, this story is absolutely bonkers. You're going to want to watch till the end, I promise. All right, let's dive in. A new whistleblower has come forward claiming that Lockheed Martin has a UFO crash recovery team. Not only that, but apparently on one particular attempt to recover a UFO, a crash UFO, they ran in to JSOC, who was also going to recover this crash UFO. Who's JSOC? That's Joint Special Operations Command. I'll put a link in the description if you want more information. During this particular engagement, a gunfight ensued and two members of JSOC were killed, allegedly, according to this whistleblower. Now, what makes this story even more interesting is that Lockheed Martin apparently has been hiding the fact, again, according to this whistleblower, they've been hiding the fact that they can reverse engineer ET craft, create a craft, and fly it. And they've been hiding this from the government telling them, no, we can't get it, we can't get it, when secretly they have. And also, apparently, during David Grush's testimony, okay, he has mentioned that humans, right, have died in this UFO cover-up, right? Albeit from, you know, our government or UFOs or aliens, right, non-human entities. He meant... One of the occasions, at least, he meant was this particular event that this whistleblower is talking about, which makes it quite interesting, right? Which So this is more details about some of David Grush's testimony. Now, again, this is what this whistleblower alleges. But the final thing that makes this fascinating is who this whistleblower went to to have this story come out. Because the whistleblower himself didn't come out. He told somebody about this, and they are coming out, Right? Who is this person? His name is John Stewart. Now, you may have heard this name in the UFO world. You may not have. Who is he? He's a former politician turned businessman, I guess I would say, um, who of late has been investigating the alien interview video, okay, known as Victor and all of that that's connected. Um, he's claiming it's real now, and he has evidence, and he's making a documentary about it. How do I know? He's come to the comments section of Edit and left comments and engaged with some of you down in the comments. So I'm going to show some of that as well in this video. But first, we're going to start with him going on this show called Redacted. It's a YouTube channel, popular YouTube channel. Again, I'll put links to all of this in the description. Um, So we're going to watch him talk about this Lockheed Martin situation. And then we're going to get into the alien interview situation and how vetted has now become part of the story. Let's dive in. If you're new to the channel and you like content like this, please hit that subscribe button, y'all. We put out a new video every single day, 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. And if you can, hit that like button. That really helps out the video. So thank y'all so much for that support. And of course, comment down below of what you think of this story. I'm going to peel this like an onion, y'all. We're going to vet this. It's going to be quite interesting. All right. And John, if you're watching this, please don't take offense to anything I say. I'm just asking questions. Now, this is a formal invitation for you to come on the show. Feel free to clear up anything that I may say or anything that's interpreted. And we would love to have you on and do an interview. So that's my formal invitation to you. I know you have watched some of the videos. So let's dive in. All right. Um, all right. First clip is him talking about Lockheed Martin. Here's John Stewart right here. This is the host of Redacted. Let's dive in, y'all. Okay. So let's. So, so let's. Having me on. My pleasure. And again, so let's go through what this insider has provided to you: Lockheed Martin information and documents and photos, which we'll show here in just a moment. We're going to show some runway photos also that this insider has sent to you and provided to you from Lockheed Martin. So. Take me back here. This Lockheed Martin insider tells you that in 2004, uh, one of their craft that they had built using alien technology had crashed and a firefight ensued between Lockheed Martin employees and JSOC who descended on this site at the same time. So can you go through this in more detail? 
Absolutely. He simply sends me an email, says that he, and I am going to protect him, even though he really didn't ask. The only thing he ever asked me not to do was name the city and town of the Lockheed storage facilities. And I am, will definitely absolutely do that. And I'm, I, I'm not even going to say where he works now because I didn't even know what the company was until I heard it on another podcast and I almost fell off my chair. I mean, I'm going to be pausing this as we go. So if you want to see this unpaused, um, you know, again, I put links in the description, you know, um, go watch this before this. But I want to pause to sort of clarify and ask questions as we go through this, um, just so we're, we're clear about that. So, again, he's saying that he was emailed. That's important to the story as we go through this clip. He's saying he was emailed this um, and this person begins to tell him the story. Okay, but that's important. He was emailed this information. With that being said, I get an email about two weeks ago. I says he was in the military. He worked for DIA, a, a, a three letter agency that, you know, Clayton is not happy with me because I finger the DIA is being running the in, a, alien interrogation and retention facility at one point. Uh, south of Area 51. And he says that um, I once worked for Lockheed. I no longer do. I'm a, I work for a subcontractor. So he was in the military, DIA, Lockheed. Now he works for another subcontractor. He said, I know why there is one of the confusions and the situations in the logjam in Congress regarding this NDAA disclosure and the disclosure amendment is that Congress finally knows and realizes that Lockheed has its own uh, NHI, non-human intelligent craft. Well, I wrote him back. I'm like, well, everyone knows that the government, you know, gave out material, metal, metals, whatnot, maybe even whole craft to various agencies, Lockheed Skunk Works being one of them. He said, no, you don't understand. Let me finish the whole story. This is from him, not my investigation. He said that um, Lockheed eventually broke through his words. Um, of how to successfully reproduce uh, a not NHI, a non-human intelligent craft. They were so successful at it that they ended up um, not informing the government of their breakthrough. And at one point, this letter tells me that Lockheed actually told the government, you know, you know that craft, and, I, and I'm being glib here. So he says letter. I'm just saying, I don't know. First, he says he got an email and then it's a letter. So is it an email that had a letter attached? And. Right. I don't know. I don't know. Is that just a slip up? Maybe. Um, but what I find interesting is how could Lockheed Martin like hide a UFO? You know what I mean? How could you hide that? hide that fact that you had successfully reverse engineered it. I don't know how you would hide that. You know, it's out flying around. I guess the, you're just, they're expecting it to hide amongst the other actual UFOs, right? The actual ET craft that are flying around. Or how you would hide that, I don't know. Again, I'm just asking questions. I don't know. You know the craft, that alien craft he gave us in 62? We just can't figure it out. You want it back? You know, and I'm being glib. So 62, he throws out. Is that an important date? Did he just make that? I can't tell if he just throwing out a date in this interview, right? Or if he, you know, the correspondence, we'll call it, because I don't know if it's a letter or an email. Uh, I don't know if it said 62, that that's when Lockheed Martin got the craft. Was Lockheed Martin even around in 62? And uh, we just, quote, we just can't figure out the technology. We can't move it past. We're at a firewall. Can't happen. A complete lie from, from Lock. I was just like, oh, uh, you know, we, you gave us that UFO, man. We can't figure it out. You guys want it back? You want it back, man? We, we don't know what to do with it. Why would Lockheed say that? They just say, let us keep working on it. Let us keep having it. I, that just doesn't add up to me that you would then offer it back to the government. Right. Why would you do that? You'd keep working on it forever. I don't. Why would you give it back? Because there's going to be new generations of people coming to Lockheed and each one of them is going to want to crack at it. Right. If they're all right coming into this facility, they're all going to want to crack at this thing. 
So why would you say, oh, let's just give it back? That, that just doesn't, again, doesn't add up. That doesn't make sense. Again, I'm not saying this isn't true. I'm just asking questions. I'm saying to me that just doesn't something about that, right? I don't know. What do y'all think? Tell me in the comments. Keyed to the oversight committee or who was ever oversighting these black projects. This is from the whistleblower. On top of that, that Lockheed um, created its own, and this is in the 70s, created its own recovery team where they... So he's saying the 1970s is when this started, their recovery team. Were, this is kind of like two repo people uh, trying to get a, you know, two banks vying for the same car, you know, trying right, to repossess right. it, that, that they were that they were actually tracking um, uh, extraterrestrial craft along with uh, aspects of the government, whether that be NORAD or JSOC, uh, because uh, Lockheed had developed advanced radar systems. They had their own aircraft and helicopters and, you know, and they developed this recovery team. And they also rec developed their own recovery team. So this team, listen to me very closely, uh, folks. We're listening. So that this team could pounce on their Lockheed craft that they reproduced that might have crashed so the government didn't get it. Does that make sense? So it makes sense and it doesn't. It makes sense. Um, it makes sense what you're saying, but it doesn't make sense that that potentially would happen. Um, but I don't know, maybe. Right. So he's basically saying there's two competing teams out there, Lockheed Martin, our own United States government going out to recover crashed UFOs. Now, is their jurisdiction just America? Right. Is this is that all we're talking about within American borders? What about global recovery teams? Right. Because the stories we've heard here that I've covered on the channel, the CIA has a recovery team. Right. The DOD Pentagon. Right. You got the different programs that probably had secret recovery teams and Lockheed's the only tech company with, um, you know, UFO material. I don't think so. Other companies have been named. So does air, every aerospace company have recovery teams? Right. It's like you show up to a crash UFO and there's like seven different groups there like who gets there first, right? Like, well, who's taking this one, Bob? I don't know. I mean, you guys got the last one. How about we take this one? Sounds good. Right? Like, I don't know. I just, or I mean, apparently it's about to get hairy in this next part of the story of what happens, right? When they meet to go get one of the craft. So let's hear more about it. I don't know. What do y'all think of the comments? Again, I'm just asking questions. Just curious, asking questions. I don't know, right? Do Does this sound awesome? And do I want this to be true? Yeah. I mean, not all of it. Some of it is sad. You're about to hear. We've created this really advanced extraterrestrial-esque uh, craft. We've lied to the government about it because we're going to hide this and just use it for our own good for whatever that is. And if this crashes, we need to recover it before the government recovers it. So the story is crazy. I'm like, this is uh, this is um, un absolutely unbelievable. I know he's legit because I know by the vernacular in his email, the coding, the abbreviations. I know an insider email in 12 seconds now doing this for five years. <sighs> 12 seconds. I get you're just it's hyperbolic. So you just mean you can very quickly tell an insider email that can't possibly be true. Right. No offense, but only five years of training. What training have you had? I'm just saying, I don't I mean, right. What are we saying here? An insider email. That doesn't mean that it's true anyway. Right. And that could be what kind of vernacular acronym. I mean, what are we talking? That can all be faked. I don't know how you would vet it instantly. Right. You would have to have your doubts no matter what, right? Because that's quite a story again, right? These are bombshell stories. So I don't know how you can just immediately know. I mean, I get messages too, emails, and I'm a nobody. So, you know, this guy's out there. So, you know, I guess he is getting 
emails and stuff from people? I don't know. Because I always just question when someone brings out a story like this, I just, and no offense to the person, but why them? Like, why was this guy chosen to represent this whistleblower? Did the whistleblower try to reach out to other people first? And he's the only one that responded? I don't know. Right? It's just interesting. Um, because it takes a long time to vet something. And he said he, he got it two weeks ago. You know what I mean? Two weeks ago. You know? I mean, it takes, it takes longer than that. This, like something like this, this is why I don't accept this stuff on the channel, y'all. This is why I don't let people email me. Don't everything public. Don't send me private stuff. I don't want secrets. I don't want anonymous sources. You know what I mean? I'm never going to be releasing something or telling a story like this, you know, coming from me, right? Like that. I, I you know, I hope not. I don't want to know that stuff because you just don't know if it's true or not. I don't know. I'm, how does he know it's true? What sort of vetting did John do for this, right? He kind of briefly talks about it a little bit. So let's get into it. Again, the story does get sad. So as much as I want this to be true, some of it is sad. You'll see. He says that um, it gets even crazier. He says that in 2004, a Lockheed ARV, a alien reproduction vehicle, was flying in South Nevada. I will not give the small town. And it crashed. But this craft was being tracked by JSOC because JSOC thought it was actually an interplanetary or interdimensional extraterrestrial craft. I, I hope. I, I, I'm, you're following me, right? So right. They thought this was Southern... they thought this was an off-world vehicle. JSOC did right because right because JSOC and, and most of the government have not been briefed in that Lockheed has has, has successfully reproduced um, to an advanced degree um, replica uh, extraterrestrial uh, craft uh, in in the in the 60s and the 70s they they developed something like a flux liner, it, you know it was it was a very basic. A flux capacitor? What did he just say? Alien reproduction vehicle. Like a flux liner. It, you know, it was it was a very basic alien reproduction vehicle. They made... A very basic alien reproduction vehicle. Um, I mean, he's just dropping all kinds of stuff here, right? This is, again, just some... I just... If that whistleblower really wants this story to go out, is this the best action to take? Because these are bombshells. This is huge. If it's true. But a guy that's making a documentary about an alien interview from 1991 gets an email, holds it for two weeks, vets it for two weeks, and then comes out with a story um, about this. Now, again, it's just just these are crazy claims like he's going to put himself on the radar like this right in my opinion i don't know it's just like coming out with these kind of stories is interesting right like i, I don't know it's interesting the leap they made the jump and I, I will not say how this happened they made the leap and made the jump kept this from the government so when the government is tracking this lockheed reproduction craft in 2004 they think it's an alien craft it crashes again this is his story not my investigation folks it crashes in southern nevada um jsoc uh, uh, a JSOC recovery team and a Lockheed recovery team descend on these crash at the same time. Now, I'm assuming JSOC probably doesn't have military insignia because they're a covert military operation. Obviously, Lockheed didn't have military insignia. And Lockheed and JSOC, from this, what this whistleblower says, start a firefight because JSOC thinks it's, you know, it's terrorists. Um, Lockheed thinks it's, you know, whoever they have to protect Lockheed's craft and a firefight ensues. It gets even crazier. This whistleblower claims that two JSOC airmen, uh, two JSOC members, two JSOC soldiers, however you call them, I'm not a military person, were actually killed in this firefight. He went on to say that he knows, that, remembered their names, and that they were of Asian descent. I mean, what a peculiar detail to put in this. 
So in 2004, two Asian uh, JSOC uh, soldiers with Asian descent allegedly died in this firefight. This is what was claimed to me. So and he, he goes and on he and has their names. And he has their names. Did he reveal? He claims he has their names. Okay, he didn't reveal their I, names to you. Never, he does no. not. He's never going to go public. He has now ghosted me, folks, which is so typical. These people come to me. They tell me these crazy tales. I vet them. I find they're real. The people are real. And then they ghost me. I don't know. So the guy has ghosted him. He's no longer responding to any of his emails. What does that sound like, y'all? I'm just saying. Someone reaches out, tells you some crazy stories, and then just disappears? I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I don't know. That seems to come up a lot with this gentleman, where he, like, reaches out to people, tells them something, and then they just ghost him. They stop talking to him. Right? Um, I don't know what kind of vetting he did in two weeks. Right. He says he talked to another whistleblower friend of his and that person told him that, uh, you know, didn't honestly didn't really confirm it, but sort of did. I don't know. I don't know. Y'all y'all tell me in the comments. I'm going to put a link to the full, um, you know, the full video here. What I do want to show is um, these photos right here that they that he claims the whistleblower sent with him. OK. So this is supposedly of a Lockheed secret facility. Could you even claim this is a runway we're about to look at? It's got geometric shapes on it. It's it's bizarre, but go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, well, let's show these. So we, how is this a runway? I mean, the the where do these these photos came from know. this whistleblower? We don't know yes. the location of these these runways specifically, but yeah, there's geometric yeah. shapes right. here. I mean, so not a normal bizarre. landing zone, right? No, no, ab 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 absolutely bizarre. Clayton, the other thing, you know, I ran for Congress. I it took an oath of candidacy when I ran for Congress. I mean, those are interesting photos. If someone can reverse image search or Google map that, like, you know, Mick West, man, if he could get on this, he could find out where those photos are from. Are those real? Have they ever been shown before? Has anyone seen those before? I'll show them again here real quick. Um, you know, y'all tell me. You ever seen these before? Let's just show these. In I mean, they are interesting. I mean, it does add a little bit of credibility to John's story, right? To have these photos, if especially if like no one's seen them or whatever. Again, I'm not saying anything about John. Again, I'd love to have him on and talk to him, ask him some questions about this story because and maybe he just didn't have time in this interview. Maybe he got edited out. But to me, there's some holes and I have some questions. It's that simple. Explain. Well, could you even claim this is a runway we're about to look at? It's got geometric shapes on it. It's it's bizarre, but go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, well, let's show these. Yeah, it kind of looks just like a road. You go around that, you know? Or just a driveway, a long driveway. I don't know. It just seems like a small, doesn't seem like many buildings, you know? But maybe it's underneath. I don't know. So I'm curious if anyone. We, how is this a this. runway? I mean, the the where do these these photos came from? Know. This whistleblower. This one right here is is is. We don't know yes. the location of these these runways specifically, but yeah, there's geometric yeah. shapes right. here. I mean, so not a normal bizarre. landing zone, right? No, no, ab 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 absolutely bizarre. Clayton, the other thing, you know, I ran for Congress. I, I took an oath of candidacy. Why wouldn't he? You know, the thing about John right here is he's trying to talk to him about the photos. And, and John is just like ignoring him about the photos. Like, talk about the photos, man. What sort of uh, details? Did you check the metadata? Did you, you know, did you do any analysis of the photos? Did you, what? You know, did you send them off to somebody? You didn't, you know, tell us the details of this. What was the vetting process? What did you do to make sure that this was real before you came and told the story out there? Right. That's the key. When I ran for Congress, even though I didn't win in 2000 and the thing that bothers me. All right. So anyway, let's move on. Again, I'll put links to all of this in the description. Now, this is from him going on before and talking about this alien interview, because that's what makes John and his situation differently. He's making this 
you know, interview um, or this documentary about this alien interview. Let me show you. Probably uh, we've we've let our audience wait long enough, but I absolutely wanted absolutely. to provide the deep context on this film so that you're not just watching this film without any context and knowing the names of the individuals who were in the room, uh, people who were there at the time. And not in biohazard suits to really hide. Okay, I don't know why that just reset, but um, hang on. Where's the video? Here we go. So this video right here. We found it on a Ronald Reagan briefing about uh, extraterrestrials there. from 1980. I called back Doty. This is like right out of a movie. Richard, what the hell is the number 27 mean? Doty. So he's dealing with Richard Doty, who we've covered in previous videos. Most recently, yesterday. Find that interesting. I'd love to ask John about Richard Doty. Not knowing. So everyone knows this video. All right, you've all seen this video. And, you know, I'm going to put a link to it so you can go find it yourself. I've showed it there. He kind of, um, he dies in this video. Like, yes, he, he dies. He's attended by medical personnel and he dies and supposedly it's real. Right uh, now, what do we all what do most people think? It's fake. It doesn't look real to me at all. Looks like puppets. I mean, just I thought it was a hoax for years. I mean, again. You know, but he's supposedly been doing an investigation and have a, has a bunch of details about it. Um, you know, I'll put links. I'll put a link to this uh, interview he did on Redacted and you can see it for yourself. Right whatever you think. But I think it's interesting that he's working on this um, and then has that information about Lockheed Martin, right? Because it doesn't stop there. So again, I'll put a link to all of this so you can see this. And I'm sure some, most of you have seen that. But I, start, I remember when I saw this and him and then the Lockheed thing, I was like, man, where do I remember this alien video from? I've, I swear I've shown this on Vetted before. Right. Well, I'll tell you where. So. Um, he came on. He, he came on to one of my uh, videos and commented. John Stewart did. This is him right here. Hunting Victor, the documentary. Five, two, four, eight. That's John Stewart right here. Right. So he comes and he um, comments. Right. And down below in one of these comments. This is what I want to focus on. Again, I'll put links to all of this so you can check it out yourself. He says, it's going great now that Danny Sheehan is backing up the interview. That part in particular, that Danny Sheehan is backing up the interview, right? Meaning this Victor Alien interview, right? And right here he says, we had TV executive meetings last week and this coming week. Please look at Redacted, huge interview this weekend about Lockheed. So we knew about it before. Uh, That's why you come to the vetted comments, y'all. That's why you hang out down there. Find out the information sometimes before it happens. Anyway, so that's what he says, right? That that's coming up. And, and what video of mine is this? Um, <laughs> not this, hang on. We need stories to understand ourselves. We are the old UFO whistle right here. Hang on. Blower David Grush is dr so he puts it in in this video, right? But what he's referring to, right? This is a video I did for David Grush in a new interview that he did on the Tubi special, right? Um, that's his channel. I'll get to that in a moment. But this video right here, where it's titled, Danny Sheehan claims alien interview video may be released, right? And listen to my intro real quick. Another uh, Patrick and Patrick here for a moment. UFO lawyer Danny Sheehan claims that a video of an actual extraterrestrial being being interviewed is going to be released, okay? So an ET, an alien, right? Being interviewed on tape. It's coming out to the public, right? So, right, that's what Danny Sheehan claims in this video, right? 
Um, and now John Stewart is basically claiming that Danny Sheehan, because Danny Sheehan doesn't isn't specific about what alien interview video, right? It is, but John Stewart is saying. It's the Victor Alien interview video. That's the one Danny Sheehan is talking about. The one everyone thinks is basically a joke. Right? And why all of a sudden it's they're trying to confirm it being real. Where's that coming from? Right? Jon Stewart. And it's almost like he's being fed information to make it seem like he's a credible person to start listening to. Because look, he provided this and provided that. Hey, and now I got this, right? I don't know. Just seems odd. Just saying. Um, but what's also what's interesting in this um, video is that I show. Oh wait, wait. Listen to what I say. My at the beginning here. We put out a new video every day, 12 p.m. Central yeah, Standard. What you think of this? That really helps out this video there when it was filmed. We'll be interviewed on tape. It's coming out to the public, right? We'll be able to see this. And he says he knows the person who was there when it was filmed, right? So let's take a look at this clip of a new interview you did and get some details. So, okay. I don't know where I say it. Anyway, sorry. I basically say I'm going to show an example of an alien interview that that I, like this is not the interview I'm talking about, but it's just an example of what potentially Daniel Sheehan could be talking about. And it was kind of a joke, you know, just kind of put it up like, yeah, the, you know, hope it's not this, you know, you know what I'm saying? I just put it up because that's the one I could think of. Right. So I show the video. I'm like, this Consider is an example. And Basically, John Stewart confirms that that this is that's the video Daniel Sheehan is talking about, right? Right. Again, let's go back to my the comment section. Right. It's going great now that Danny Sheehan is backing up the interview, right? Because if you go to Hunting Victor the documentary, okay, this is um, John Stewart's YouTube for it, um, right. They've got the alien inter interview on it. That's where I got the video and used it. I didn't even know it was John's. You know, I just grabbed it from there and used it in my thing. And I, in my description, I linked to it. Don't worry. Uh, I always linked everything. Just like I linked all this. But what's interesting is someone, afterwards, someone sent me a clip saying, hey, man, there's a guy posting your content online. And I was like, what? No way. So... Check this out. This is not on my YouTube channel. This is on Jon Stewart's YouTube channel. Okay. Now, the title says the alien interview video credit Patrick from the vetted podcast on YouTube. Originally, it didn't say anything about Patrick from vetted or nothing. Just watch this. UFO lawyer Danny Sheehan claims that a video of an actual extraterrestrial being being interviewed is going to be released. Okay, so an ET, an alien, right, being interviewed on tape, it's coming out to the public, right? We'll be able to see this. And he says he knows the person who was there when it was filmed, right? So let's take a look at this clip of a new interview you did and get some details, so... Did you notice how, one, it just put in my video, right? Which is fine, whatever. <laughs> Typically, you sort of react to them. But someone in the comments was like, hey, man, you're just putting Patrick's stuff up there. Honestly, I don't care. Do whatever you want, John. Honestly, it's, it's fine. Um, you don't have to credit me. I, I really, I don't care. I take the Joe Rogan approach, baby. Just get it all out there. Uh, but what, what I find interesting is how this is edited a little bit. So when, when I say that Daniel Sheehan knows the person who did the interview, he puts up the guy, Victor, right? There was a picture that he, that he put right here, this guy, Victor, right? 
And then he shows the clip of Daniel Sheehan talking about the alien video. And he puts clips of the alien video. Video of an actual interview. Right here. There's going to be a video of an actual interview of an actual extraterrestrial being. There's you know a, this? Yes. You know, so, I mean, I know that that exists. Uh, and, uh, and that's part of the crown jewels that they're not going to want to reveal. They're not going to want to reveal. It's already out. That video has been shown. That cannot be the video that Daniel Sheehan is talking about. I just can't believe that. I, how does Jon Stewart know that this is the video? Right? Is he going off of my video? Because I clearly Jones say it's an example. You, you need real solutions. And so right. and go to these places and let me show break you. Break open the door and say, yeah, we're here for the UFO. It will cover it. That's what Bet it does, right? Let me see. Let's take a look at this example of an alien interview that has floated around on YouTube and the internet and Reddit and whatever for quite a while. And um it's a Area 51. It's from a guy named Victor. You might have heard of this. Um, and this is the type of thing that could be potentially released. I'm just trying to prepare everybody. See, that's all I'm saying. I just said it was an example. So I hope he's not going off of my comment or off my video, right? And editing this together, John, to make it seem like that's what Daniel Sheehan was talking about. Because why wouldn't Daniel Sheehan just say that video that we all know, this public that you can watch online? Because he's making it seem like this video is going to get released. It may be. I mean, if people think it's that video, it's not going to be good. So I'm curious, I, you know, the comments on this video are going to be nuts. If people watch it this far, I mean, it's going to be nuts. I can't believe that that's what's being said right now. That, that, that the video from my video right here, right, of Daniel Sheehan on, uh, he was on Night Shift, okay? Go watch that show with Clint, and he interviewed Daniel Sheehan, and that's what he said, right? Alien interview, and he's talking about that video? At least that's what Jon Stewart is confirming. Again, that's what he's saying in my comment section. Ah, just deleted that video. Damn, darn it. Uh, anyway, right here, right? It's going great now that Danny Sheehan is backing up the interview. So I don't know, man. That just, I found that interesting. And just the way, you know, it's fine that he did this video, right? He, he put it up. Again, no problem, John. You can use my stuff. It's fine. Great. Go for it. Um, this, uh, okay, there's more to this. Check this out. If you come down a little bit more, someone says, um, hey, mate, you know it's well known. Victor is Robert Dean. Right? It's like, who's Victor, right? Remember Victor? They're saying that guy is Robert Dean, right? Because this is the guy that supposedly leaked the video out. You know, he wanted to remain anonymous. He knew about the alien. He knew a lot about the alien. Um, claimed to be there, right? Um, leaked it out, smuggled it. Um and check this out. People have said that Robert Dean is Victor, right? So here he is. Here's Victor, right? And someone did some stuff where they colorized it to help bring out some, you know, you can see the shades better and the beard and kind of the hair a lot better, right? Than the, than the other picture, right? Than this one. So same picture. Right. And this is Robert Dean. That's him older, same style glasses. That's him from the side. He's got a little ponytail. But, right, here he is. Here he is. I mean, clearly, this is him older. I mean, this is supposed to be him younger. But, yeah, I mean, he's still got the flip of the hair. I think it is him, absolutely. And when you look at more pictures of Robert Dean, you start looking online, you're like, okay, yeah, that's that, that looks just like the guy. Not saying it's him, but, uh, you know, looks an awful like him. Very close. So just thought that was interesting. You know, 
about John Stewart. But again, welcome invitation to have him come on, clear up anything. If I said anything that offended, I apologize. I'm just asking questions. I'm just a normal average person um, who wants to find the truth about all this and just want to make sure that I'm focusing my attention on stuff that's truthful and at least on the surface seems truthful to, you know, jump into. Um, there's so many stories out there, so much time, you know, little time to invest with your life. So, and I feel, you know, just want to make sure that the content we bring to the people here, people that watch this, the people that like this stuff or are into it, you know, they're getting the real stuff. But it's for each person to make their own decision. I'm not trying to influence anybody either. Uh, the stories are fascinating. Um, and yeah, you know, just curious. So look, we're going to end on a particular clip here. Uh, John went on Richard Dolan's show, and I have a lot of respect for Richard Dolan in the sense that, you know, I just like him. I'm not saying I agree with everything he says, but seems like a cool dude. I like the way he presents stuff. Seems very level-headed in a lot of ways. Uh, and, you know, he went on Richard Dolan's show and talked. And, you know, I, I'll admit, John has, you know, a lot more evidence alleged evidence right about his about this alien interview video than i thought so i'll give him that there's definitely more there than originally um he's saying he knows all the people that are in the room he's got their names blah 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 he's got some stuff i mean you know okay he's broken it down he's doing work all right and he's trying to get funding for a documentary to put it all together right so and he wants to be able to show that um, but he goes over a lot of stuff here. So look, I'm going to put a link in the description to this interview with Richard Dolan so you can go watch it. Um, and, you know, it's interesting. But look, I'm going to let him, I'm going to, you know, to be fair to John, I'm going to give him the final word on this for y'all. So from him. Allowing me that the last brief, two things, folks. Zoom in so the bean's head is in your full screen of your computer or your iPhone and see the mouth open and closing. See the exasperation of the bean. Hard to impossible to do that animatronically in 96. The widow fingered her husband in the room. He was with the medical corps of the of the of the I'm sorry, what? Did I did I hear that correctly? The widow fingered the husband in the room. What the Hang on. I'm sorry. Am I? What's going on here? It's impossible to do that animatronically in 96. The widow fingered her husband in the room. <laughs> I'm sorry. Look, y'all, it's late. I'm recording the video. I apologize. I got the giggles. Oh, my God. Okay, I, I rarely laugh like that, y'all. So, pardon me. Uh, you know, I do. Gosh. <laughs> I get it now. But he's basically saying that he contacted the widow of that person and she fingered him out like <laughs> she said it was oh it could be my husband that you know so again there's more to that story i'll put a link to the description so you can check that out but uh sorry that just caught me off guard and uh <laughs> i apologize for laughing okay i meant no nothing bad about that um so anyway go uh I didn't let John finish. Let me. Let, he I was with the finish. medical corps of the of the of the armed services, and number two, I beg people out there. I went out and sought out the skeptics. There are people that have not let me on their podcast yet who are ardent skeptics. I went to them. I am not afraid of anybody going over this data. I, I you have to understand this. Um, I, I want skeptics to, 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 to plow over this and to comb through this. Um, I'm, I'm not going to sell you on my stories. Those happened. I'm, it's crazy for me that I would even fudge anything about those stories. But I, I, I went towards the skeptics, not away from the skeptics. And I simply still to this day 
just want to find the truth. And I. Hey, can't argue with that, right? If someone's willing to get, you know, come on and get asked some questions. Hey, I got nothing but respect for that. And I always treat people um, in my house with respect, right? I.e. the podcast is the example, right? You come in my house, the podcast here. Yeah, I will treat you with respect, John, of course. Ask you questions. Uh, push back on me as well. I'm just curious more than anything. It is fascinating. I mean, if it look, if it turns out that that do I hold, you know, that that video could be real? Yeah, absolutely. I don't know, but just my gut tells me it's not. But look, I also haven't done any investigation, deep investigation into it. Right. So that, you know, to be fair to you. So and you have. Right. So, you know, I get that. Um, anyway, um, look, you want to find the truth? I commend that. So, again, I hope you accept my invitation to come on the show and talk. And again, part of my laughing, I, I, I would literally just this, I had the giggles there at the end there. I apologize. I just caught me off guard that comment. And I forgot that was in there. Uh, I actually don't even remember hearing that first time I, I listened to that. Um, so anyway, all right, y'all. Sorry for the long video. Wait, sorry. I'm not supposed to apologize for long videos. Y'all like the long videos. Um, there you go. Boom. Long video for you. Um, please. This is crazy, right? So um, tell me what y'all think in the comments and, you know, we'll, we'll go from there. We'll see you guys on tomorrow's video. Remember, every day, 12 p.m. Central Standard Time, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And if you forgot to hit the like button and you watch this far, please hit that like button. It really helps out the video. So, again, can't wait to read the comments. And don't just go down and comment. Make sure you read them for yourself as well. It's going to be some interesting stuff uh, in there. All right, guys. We'll see you all tomorrow, vetters. Remember, every day's a gift. Peace.